What is up heroes, it's Midnight Zero and welcome back to the NCBL. This week we are going up against JP, coach of the Panish Primarinas. Last week we went up against Sam, we did not end up winning actually. It was overall a really good battle, it was very intense, so please do check it out when you have the chance. And yeah, real quick before we move on to week 3, I want to touch on a couple things. I've had a lot of time to think about it, I always analyze my matches, especially if I lose or feel like I did something wrong and look for a reason to improve. And really after coming after it, or coming after uh, the loss, I thought about it and, and realized a lot of it came down to one prep, right? I didn't prep adequately for like Sharpedo, uh, speed boost Sharpedo in particular. I definitely should have known the rules in the prep process and of course during the battle. Now I shouldn't have waited until, you know, the moment I was actually going up against the Sharpedo to really confirm whether or not uh, he was allowed to not Mega in the first. And I'm not complaining about that rule, I don't even think that that's the case, I think that's how the game should be able to play, you shouldn't have to mega the first turn you're in, and I'm pretty sure I've even advocated for that, I just wasn't sure if that was the, uh, the rule at the time, so that was definitely my bad in prep, and also that could have led to us playing to two different end games. so really good stuff on Sam's part, I felt like I was ahead the entire game, I felt like I was, you know, playing incredibly well, but it could also just have been because Sam and I were playing to two different end games because I wasn't taking into account the speed boost Sharpedo, and uh, he was, right? So he was playing to his best end game while I was playing to my best end game under the information I had. And so yeah, so Sam still played really well. And also winning is simultaneously playing well, but also not screwing yourself over, right? Not making mistakes. So even if I actually was playing well throughout most of the game, Sam wasn't making errors to the point of giving me the game. And that in and of itself, that sort of consistency, that sort of maintaining uh, without let, let it, preventing your opponent from getting away with the battle or, you know, uh, pulling away from you is uh, also really well, um, is also really good as a, as a skill per se when it comes to battling and what else? Oh yeah, I also didn't play perfectly even in the situation I was at. Um, my best plays probably were to either go off the Ice Fang Miss, which ironically would have happened, or to sack something immediately, or even sack Bulu. My, my best play was probably to stay in with Bulu, and either sack it to Ice Fang or hope for the miss, and then on the turn after, bluff Scarf Raikou, and then pull a double into one of my Trick Room setters. Outside of that, I don't think I could have done anything else better in the battle um, with the information I was at. Uh, like, obviously it comes down to me not knowing all that I should have, and that's, that's my fault. So, I learned from it. Sam's a great battler. I'm excited to see his side of the battle when it does come out, and you guys should check it out too. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description. You'll be seeing more of him too. But anyways, this is for week three, we are going up against JP, and as you can see, well, I'll scroll over, you guys can see a little bit more of his team. Uh, you can see his team is actually pretty solid. It's actually a pretty solid team. It doesn't have, like, a lot of mons that stand out on their own, right? That are just like, whoa, you really gotta watch out for this mon, but together, they actually form a very formidable uh, opponent. Looking at his team really quickly, he always picks Mega Gallade. It's just, it's JP's thing, Psyblade. I hate going against it because it's got great coverage, even though he almost always brings the same bulk up, drain punch, like psycho cut plus coverage move, um, Mega Gallade. Never the typical like SD, CC. Um, I think it also gets Shadow Sneak, it gets Zen Headbutt, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a pain to deal with. Once it starts getting, getting its, uh, I don't know, its bulk ups, and it's starting to heal up with Drain Punch. It's really difficult to take down, so you have to watch out for that. Lycanroc Dusk is formidable. It's got decent coverage. Is it worth pick one? Probably not, in my opinion. It's not even a Z-move user. Um, yeah, <laughs> Como is also really threatening, especially now that it has Dragon Dance and Close Combat. With access to, you know, DD plus Close Combat plus Outrage, it's hitting really hard. On the special side, it also hits really hard. He is not allowed to use the, what is it, like, Clangorous Scale, Blaster, whatever the Omni Boosting move is, he's not allowed to use it, so that hinders it quite a bit. But it is still a really potent Z-move user and definitely something to work uh, to watch out for, try and figure out if it's more physical or special or mixed or whatnot. Crook is a mon that I've used in the past and really enjoyed using. It's a great Pursuit user, great Scarf user, it can run relatively defensive sets with Rocks and Intimidate, but it's really meant to be a solid sweeper with, you know, Stab Earthquake and Stab Knockoff. Chandelure, really hard hitting, uh, either Specs or Scarf user usually. It can run sub Calm Mind, which is something he might bring in anticipation of a bulkier, stallier team. So, who knows. It's got base 145 special attack with great stab, um, Shadow Ball, and Fire Blast. 
The thing is, not a lot of teams pack ghost resistances or coverage, so it's really difficult to have a, you know, a consistent switch into Chandelure, unless you have some really bulky mons, which I do. But definitely something worth looking out for. Also, fire immunity, which is nice, so. Zarina also got some buffs. I think it got access to Power Whip now, and that is a lot better than Tropkick. When it comes to, if you want like a banded adamant, Zarina, you know, base 120 attack and you got a base 120 stab power whip coming through, that is a hard hitting move. It can also run bulkier sets with, you know, dual screens, rapid spin synthesis, all that stuff. I think it also gets U-turn and high jump kick. So it's it's a formidable threat. Nothing nothing crazy, but definitely worth considering. And I think that, that kind of covers JP's team in a nutshell. Nothing that like super stands out, but is definitely something you can't sleep on. Tentacruel is very similar. Uh, actually, surprisingly offensive Tentacruel is running around right now on the ladder, I believe, with Ice Beam, Hydro Pump, um, Acid Spray, and that sort of thing. But for the time being, I really only anticipate a bulkier set, maybe T-Spikes, maybe Rapid Spin. You'll notice he's got a few Rapid Spinners, and maybe something like Haze as well. But some of my mods beat in 1v1. It, it is definitely a bulky Sponge Mon that I don't want to have to deal with, though. And then down here you'll see Tapu Lele. Tapu Lele was actually draftable in this league, but under the condition that it is not Psychic Surge. So we don't have to worry about Psychic Terrain. It is still, you know, really formidable with great dual stabs in addition to a base 130 special attack stat, but the Psychic uh, moves are not gonna be hitting anywhere near as strongly as they normally would. Magnazone is great for trapping steel types. Hits hard especially. It's nothing new really. Punch Crow definitely hits hard on the physical attacking side, and with Moxie, it can definitely put in work. It can get a sweep going. Its speed stat is usually what hinders it, and Sucker Punch got its base power reduced a bit, so that makes it a little bit more difficult for Honch Crow to be as you know potent as it used to be, but still definitely a threat. Zoroark, his second Zemon, definitely a great choice for a Zemon. It is inherently a relatively weak, in my opinion, but it has a great mix pool, and because it has solid coverage, it can make use of Z-moves, and its ability, right? Its ability illusion is, just makes mind games difficult. It just makes mind games difficult. Bike Volt, definitely a threat. Hits really hard, base 145 special attack, just like Chandler, but it's a lot slower. He might bring it as a trick room option. Claydol can get up rocks, rapid spin. Yeah. Um, Ambipom is actually great for coverage. I really liked using Ambipom when I had it. It's got a really strong fake out, return, you can get like fire punch, ice punch, thunder punch, aerial ace, uh, U turn, knock off, low kick. It's got a lot of different coverage moves, and it can hit decently hard when you put a life orb on it. So. Yeah, definitely a threatening team, but with that being said, let's get into our team this week. That is going to start with our Greninja. Greninja is just proving to be an incredible offensive threat. There's just nothing else to get around it. I will say that I didn't have a lot of time to prep this week. I was visiting Lizzie when I was, well, like, had my other battle, and so I moved on to this battle, and I didn't really have a lot of time to prep, but I made do with what I could, and yeah, Greninja seems to do a lot of work. Surf, Ice Beam, Water Shuriken, Extra Sensory. Dark Pulse isn't necessary because it, Surf hits everything just as hard, or it hits everything harder. Um, and what it would hit like super effectively, I think it also hits super effectively with Surf, so it's just not necessary. If there are certain Scarf Mons, Water Shuriken could be helpful. Ice Beam is there for his Grass types, and Extra Sensory is there, I believe, for, um, what is it there for? Como? No. Tentacruel, that's what it was. Uh, it's Tentacruel, but pretty much everything else gets hit by Surf really hard, so that's all I really plan on going for. And the priority again is for coverage with uh, some faster mods. Torrent, because we have to, and speed is just barely to outspeed Ambipom, if it's max speed, of course. Moving on to the next mod, we've got Scarf Chomp. Yes, I, I love using Scarf Chomp. I think it's third week in a row I've brought Scarf Chomp. It's, it's just good. It's just good. Um, it hits a great speed tier and it hits really hard. So, uh, Earthquake, Outrage, Dragon Claw, Stealth Rock. I felt like, of all the coverage moves I could use, he had a lot of immunities where I could either go for Poison Jab, but then I went hit Magnezone. I could hit, um, I think it was like Stone Edge, but then I wouldn't be hitting, I don't know, Gallic could set up all over me or something like that. It just really didn't make sense to go for one of the coverage moves. I would much rather just go for Dragon Claw or Earthquake or pull a double anticipating something like that. Or I could go for Stealth Rock. This is actually my Stealth Rocker. It's not a really reliable Stealth Rocker, but I'm gonna try and do that. It could also bluff that I'm not Scarf and lull him into a sense of security. 
And yeah, that's all it really comes down to. Earthquake and Outrage hit things really hard. Not quite Gallade hard enough, especially if he's bulking up. But this is a really good answer to Scarf Chandelure, to Scarf Crook, to Plus One Como, to um, Lycanroc, to Tentacruel. I, at, with its speed tier, it's hitting a lot of things really hard, and I think the Scarf Chomp Sweep has a lot of potential this week. So that's why that's here. Um, next up is going to be Mimikyu. Yes, we're bringing Mimikyu for the first time. It's a very typical set, Life Orb, Shadow Claw, Play Rush, Shadow Sneak, and SD. Disguise is going to be really helpful in potentially getting a free hit off on something. Its coverage actually hits a lot of things really hard. It can hit almost everything neutrally or super effectively. And at plus two, it's doing a lot of damage. The thing is, you know, Mimikyu is one Mon that can usually come in, set up an SD, take something out, and then get a solid amount of chip off on the next thing with Shadow Claw. And that might be the case here. It also is really important because it's a fighting type immunity. I can bring this in potentially on Gallade and use it to get rid of it, right? <laughs> or force it to waste a turn or the like. It can't, in killing my Mimikyu, heal up so that the next Mon that comes in can take it out for sure. And that could be Scarf Chomp, that could be Greninja, etc. So, yeah, Mimikyu can definitely put in a lot of work here. Shadow Sneak is also helpful for priority against some of his faster threats. And, yeah, I'm gonna try and go for Shadow Claw as often as I can. I don't want to risk Play Rough missing, even though it does more damage. So, we'll see. Next up is going to be Fizdef Subtect Gliscor or Gliscor. It's uh, very similar to the set I ran um, a while ago. It's got, you know, EQ, Toxic, Sub, and Protect. Same sort of, I don't know, uh, rationale for bringing it, except this time we're bringing a very physically defensive Gliscor, and that's because it's, it's just going to be helpful against that. Any special threat that I would be using Gliscor against, it's not going to really matter how specially defensive Gliscor is, that special threat is probably going to take it on. Whether that's Lele or Magnazones, you know, could potentially be, you know, analytic, uh, flash cannons, HP ices from things, you know, Tentacruel, it's just not really worth it. And I would much rather live a potential Ice Punch from Ambipom or a potential Ice Punch from Mega Gallade to get a Toxic off and, you know, protect or substitute to get extra damage off on those Mons over time. So that's why we're bringing the set we are bringing. There's a little bit of Spadef just because I really only have enough defense for the necessary calcs to live, you know, certain things after rocks. And I have enough speed to outspeed a max speed Magnazone and I think a Tentacruel with minimal speed investment. So that's why that speed investment is there. And yeah, the rest went into Spadef just because, just because I might need to take a Spadef hit, right? I just might need to, so. But, as you might expect, I do have a special wall, and that is going to be my Toxapex. It is just max HP, max Spadef. I didn't have the time to really refine the EVs on this Mon, but yeah, it takes, I think, 45% from like Modest Specs, Chandelure, Shadow Ball, or something like that. So this is my special switch in. As you might note, though, a lot of his special attackers can hit Pex super effectively, but they might not do so immediately, or they might have to do so on the switch in. So they could be tempted to go for Psychic against it, but they might know Scizor is coming in afterwards and can knock out Tapu Lele. I also haven't mentioned Scizor yet, but Scizor's the last one. Um, they might be tempted to go for Thunderbolt with Magnezone, but they might not want to let Garchomp come in for a free switch and then it will just quick click Earthquake. Uh, something like that. So for that reason, I think it works well. It also is really helpful against Como. I think I take a Psycho Cut at plus one from Mega Gallade or something like that. And I can potentially Toxic it. I know I don't have to miss then. This can also help work as a pivot against something like Ambipom's Fake Out, which will do like 35% max, I think, if it's Life Orb. Um, yeah, that's, that's kind of the rationale here. It's a pivot in particular. It's also a special tank. And it's there to get up toxic spikes, poison things, scald, get burns, damage, a lot of passive chip damage, and yeah, also to like pressure his spinners, right? He has three different spinners, and all of them give me momentum if they're forced to rapid spin, and all of, like a ton of his mons are weak to, what's it called, toxic spikes, so definitely gonna want to have the, at least have the option to put on that pressure. And then lastly, as I mentioned, is Scizor. It's, again, not very EV fine-tuned because, like Tox Effects, I didn't really have the time, but Fizz Def Scizor, third help out with Gallade. I'm not, I'm intentionally not EVing it to outspeed Magnezone because I would much rather just U-turn and um, 
not really worry about having about being able to outspeed a Specs Magnazone. If he's Scarf, I'll probably live in HP Fire anyways. If he's Specs, I'm just gonna try not to get trapped in the first place. I'm really only gonna use this against Mega Gallade and uh, potentially Como. It depends on what his coverage is because. With his coverage, he could be running Flamethrower or Como, he could be running Fire Fang Lycanroc, he could be running Fire Fang Crocodile, right? Depending on what he has, I'm probably just going to be bringing Scizor in for one hit and then scouting on the next turn anyway. So I'm not planning on, you know, keeping it in on a lot of things. Maybe Zarina, maybe Lele, uh, maybe Honchcrow, right? Um, maybe Ambipom. It's again another pivot into a more offensive threat. So that's the team this week. Again, I I'm not 100% with it. Not 100% with it. I'm going to have to play really well. I think my team has an awkward matchup against JP's team, just from a defensive typing standpoint and all. But but I think it's doable. It's definitely doable. Uh, JP is definitely getting better. I know I've played JP quite a few times now, and I have a feel for his playstyle, but it's a bit different this season. I know he's working on it. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to try my best. I'm going to try and go in with a better mentality than I have in the past, a little bit more of a healthily checked competitiveness, I guess. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys are looking forward to it too. But until the battle, this will be Night Zero, and this mission is complete.